Hi everybody, this is a review video of the first graders of the IBM and World War II. Okay, so the Willy Heidinger operated a corporation called Tehomac, which was a licensed distributor of IBM's tabulating technology. So there was this person named Willy, and he worked for Tehomac. And he had a license, he had an official license that they can sell the IBM computer into German market. You need a license in order to officially operate your business. So Willy's job was operating the business, uh, IBM business in Germany. So German post-war hyper, hyperinflation reached a peak in the early 1920s and was greatly detrimental to Heidinger's business. So after World War I, Germany became really almost like bankrupt and in all German citizens and government they worked hard and so, so they made money and with the money, hyperinflation occurred together. So it means that all the product and utilities, land and buildings, all became extremely expensive. So that became peak in 1920s, and those hyperinflation was detrimental, was harmful. Okay. Harmful to Heidinger's business. And Watson, cognizant of Heidinger's financial position, looked to claim substantial ownership of the sub's diary. So Dr. Watson, he was cognizant, he was aware. He was aware of Heidinger's financial difficulty with his business, so he looked to, looked to it means he expected. Dr. Watson expected to claim substantial ownership of the subsidiary. So in 1922, he struck a deal with a cornered Heidinger for 90% ownership of the Humac, with Heidinger retaining the remaining 10%. So Dr. Watson made a deal with Heidinger, and since Heidinger was, had a, had a diff financial difficulty, he agreed upon the contract with Dr. Watson. So Watson uh, main, obtained 90% of the Humac, and Heidinger only had like remaining 10%. Through the HOMAC, IBM's tabulation technology found its way into multiple German industries and received a commercial success. So using the HOMAC company, IBM really uh, penetrated into multiple German industry and they made a huge commercial success with a lot of German industry. But Watson knew that in order to claim the German tabulation market as his own, he would have to win the German census. So even though Dr. Watson, he earned, he earned a huge share of German computing market, he, he thought that it's not uh, winning the market. He wanted to monopolize like uh, German computing market. So in order to do that, he knew that he had to win the German census. Census is a business of counting the population of the country. So he knew, Dr. Watson knew that he has to win this German census in order to monopolize in order to truly win the German computing market. So five months after Hitler was inducted ch Chancellor of Germany, census was scheduled for June of 1933 to obtain information on the religion of each member of population. So five months after, uh, five months after uh, Hitler was like inducted or Hitler was appointed to the Chancellor of Germany, the census began on June 1933 to obtain information on religion of each member. So German citizens and Jewish people had different citizens. German usually had Catholic or Protestant, and Jewish had their own religion. So by counting the number of religion, member of the religion, you can count on the citizens. Okay. So aspiring for that patronage wasn't adapted his tabulator to fit Hitler's demand. So aspiring, aspiring means like hoping. Hoping for patronage, patronage means support. So Dr. Watson hoped to win the Nazi support. So Dr. Watson adapted his tabulators to fit Hitler's demand. He changed his computer system to fit Hitler's requirement. Hitler had certain requirements for the computing skills to like identify, counting, and managing, organizing. So Watson changed his computer system to fit, to better fit 
particulars demand. So along with the tabulation machines, having the capability of counting, classifying each citizen, the Home Act provided recruitment, training, even fed workers needed to operate the census. So not only the De Home Act, they provided computer technology which can count and classify each citizen of Germany, but also De Home Act provided recruitment for the workers so that can, they can count, they can conduct the census. Also, De Home Act provided training for the workforces and also De Home Act provided workers itself to more conduct a consensus efficiently. So the Home Act's concert, consultant for government and trade, Carl Cook, managed to secure a contract for Reichmark 1.3 million mark to superintendent the Prussian census. So there is this man named Carl Cook. He was also he worked for the Home Act and was in charge of making contract with government, and he succeeded making contract with government worth a 1.3 million Deutsche Mark, and that business was Prussian census. Prussian is a people who live nearby like Germany and France area, so they started to count the number of pop Prussian population first. And Karl Koch, he win this project. And upon clinching the commission, Koch, so clinching, it means he like succeeded. You know? So Karl Koch, he succeeded winning the commission. He, Karl Koch succeeded making money by making a government contract with Germany. And Koch panned Watson, saying, we now have a chance to demonstrate what we are capable of. Watson responded, he, he hoped to have pleasure of visiting Koch country next year. So uh, pan means that Koch wrote a letter. Cook wrote a letter to Watson saying that now we have a chance to show off our ability and Dr. Watson answered that he is going to visit Cook's country next year and we can talk about our business there next year. So on June 15, 1933, the Home Act began tabulating Prussian census with IBM precision. So on June 15, the Home Act company started counting population of Prussian uh, census and they could count accurately because of IBM's uh, tabulating skills, tabulating uh, technology. So this trade was the first of many during the Third Reich era, which ultimately precipita precipitated the deplorable event of the Holocaust. So this Prussian census was, a many, uh, was the first census during many census uh, during Third Reich era, which ultimately Precipitated, which began deplorable, like which began horrible, which began a horrible event of Holocaust. So the Prussian census was the beginning of the horrible Holocaust. So following the lucrative success of Prussian census, Watson invested invested seven million Deutsche Mark into German business. So Dr. Watson had huge success in German Prussian census. So he invested more money, 7 million Deutsche Mark into German business and large portion of the allocations were used to develop the production facility site in Berlin. So among these 7 million mark, large portion of the money was spent in building the factories, building the factories in Berlin. 1934, opening day of the factory, Heidinger gave a speech in front of IBM representatives and numerous Nazi officials. So 1934, they, they had an opening ceremony for a factory, and Heidinger gave a speech in front of IBM people and in front of many Nazi officials. So he proclaimed the physicians examines the human body and determines whether or organs working to the benefit of the entire organism. So Heidinger, he announced, he made a speech, and he said that the physician, physician is doctor. The doctor's job is examining the human body, and he has to evaluate whether all the organs inside are working for the benefit of the entire human organism. And we, the Home Act, are very much like the physician in that we dissect cell by cell German 
control body. And Heidinger compared his company Dehomek to the job of the doctors. So he said that what we are doing, what Dehomek is doing is quite similar to doctor's job. So we dissect. So like dissect usually it means cut, right? And well, you cut into pieces. And usually dissect is like related to a surgery. When doctors operate a surgery, they dissect the human body in order to examine what is wrong. So uh, he said that Dehomek is just like doctor. Dehomek is cutting this German cultural body cell by cell into small pieces to examine the German society. And Heidinger extended the metaphor. We are proud that we may assist in such a task a task that provides our nation's physician, Adolf Hitler, with the material he needs for his examinations. And he also uh, made speech even further, making more comparison. And we are, Dehomag is proud of assisting, helping out such a task, helping out examining German cultural body. And also the task is in order to provide help to the physician. Here, physician refers to Hitler and with the material he needs for his examination. So Dehomek is providing information and material so that Hitler can examine German culture society. So our, our physician can then determine whether calculated values are in harmony with the health of our people. Then our physician, physician refers to Hitler. Hitler can determine or evaluate whether a certain part of a German society is in harmony with the entire society or not. And it also means that if such is not the case, our physician can take corrective procedures to correct the sick circumstances. And also it means that if there is something wrong, if there is a sick part, this is another metaphor, right? If there is a certain social part, social uh, section that is not really beneficiary to entire society, this government, German government or other Hitler, can take a corrective procedure, meaning that we can like remove those parts. So he concluded his speech, hail to our German people and their Führer. Their Führer also refers to Hitler and Adolf Heidinger. He concluded his speech by greeting Hitler and his German people. So this uh, copy of the speech was rushed back to New York. So after Heidinger made a speech, this script of the speech was sent to Dr. Watson, and Watson praised Heidinger for a job well done. And after reading this script, Dr. Watson told that uh, Heidinger did a good job making a delivery. And after a myriad of trade, correspondence, and investment with the Third Reich, Thomas J. Watson and IBM inevitably swore the Nazi allegation. So myriad means like many. Okay? So, after many trade with the German government and correspondence, correspondence usually refers to letter. So, communication. So, after a lot of uh, letters going back and forth from between German government and IBM, and also after a lot of investment with the Third Reich, Thomas Watson and IBM, they swore, they made a promise with the Dutch allegiance. So allegiance is like showing loyalty. So uh, IBM promised that they will be, they will work uh, for the Nazi regime and they work, they would promise that their loyalty to the Nazi government. Okay, so on September 15th, 1935, Hitler ratified the Nuremberg Race Law. So on this day, September 15, Hitler, he passed the law. He passed the law of the Nuremberg Race Law. And during this time, IBM technology held 95% of the German tablet market. So IBM like almost monopolized German computing market. And IBM tabulators took German business by storm. 
These included aviation, locomotive, steel, banking, electrical, and automotive industries. So IBM's computing technology, they took the German market by storm. So they take, means that they take up German market really aggressively. For instance, so uh, IBM technology they uh, like take up aviation. Aviation is usually related to airplane, okay. airplane and locomotive is like train, train business and steel, banking, electrical and automotive means car, car industry. So. IBM's computer technology like take up almost like all heavy industry of German market. And there was virtually no business that could not benefit from punch card technology. So back in these old days, computer tabulating machine, they used this paper to keep the information, paper with different number of holes. So these each paper store different information. So that's why tabulating technology is called as a punch card technology. So using this technology, uh, all the every every German industry could benefit from this technology. So seeking to innovate the remunerative German tabulating market, Dehomek introduced a powerful tabulator classified as a Dehomek D11. So remunerative means profitable. So in order to innovate profitable German computing market, Dehomek introduced even more powerful computer classified as a Dehomek D11. Okay, they introduced a new model into German computing market. Okay, so this is how far we covered last time. So you guys did a good job in participating. We'll continue our lesson next time. Okay, so good job everybody. Thank you. Bye.